1948, Omega launched the first Seamaster. People wanted a more durable everyday watch with an element of water resistance. In 1957, Omega launched the first dive Seamaster. Jump forward to 2019 and Omega launches this, a phenomenal watch. Welcome back to Bark and Jack. I am Adrian, and this is my personal Seamaster. This is the Omega Seamaster 300 Coaxial Master Chronometer. I've had this watch for about two months. I've already done an unboxing, initial thoughts video why I bought this watch. This is going to be about why I think this watch is phenomenal. And I don't mean that in any form of hyperbole. This watch honestly is insane. It's not perfect. There are things about this watch that I dislike. There are things about this watch that I hate. But as an overall package, it is honestly mind-blowing. But that's just my opinion. That's how I view this watch. Let's start with the facts and look at the specs. We have a stainless steel case, which is 42 millimeters wide. It's 13.7 millimeters deep. It's 50 millimeters lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width, and it has 300 meters of water resistance. We have an anti-reflective coating on the top and bottom of the sapphire crystal, and we have a black ceramic bezel with white enamel markers. We have a white ceramic dial, which is laser etched. The bracelet is 20 millimeters wide. It doesn't taper, so it's 20 millimeters all round. It has a wetsuit extension and a micro adjustment. The movement inside is an in-house master chronometer, caliber 8800. Uh, if you think this watch looks good, wait until we talk about the movement, because the movement is the showstopper. It's cost tested, metas tested. It moves at 25,200 vibrations an hour, has 35 joules and 55 hours of power reserve. It's accurate from zero to plus five seconds a day. The price is 4,450 on a bracelet or 4,170 on a strap. Let's start off talking about the wearability because if you follow the channel, you'll know that I don't like watches over 40 or typically don't like watches that are over 40 millimeters. This is 42 millimeters and there's a good reason as to why this is 42, but wears great for me. The width of a case is just the visual size of the case. It's not necessarily the wearability of the case. The wearability comes from the lug to lug measurement. And on this, it's actually 49.5 millimeters. The five digit Submariner is actually 50 millimeters. As you can see, the bracelets droop straight down from the edge of the lugs, whereas on a Submariner, it sticks out a little bit. Although it's wide, it's very wearable on my 16.5 centimeter wrist. For a long time, the design of the Seamaster just felt, it didn't do anything for me. It, it was, it's a bit like a C-Class Mercedes. It's a decent car, it's not a sexy car. It doesn't do anything for me. The same with the Seamaster. But then there's something about the white dial and black bezel. It's not uniform. So this gives off the perception that this choice has been done for a purpose as opposed to styling. Regardless of whether that's true or not, that's just how my brain sees it. I really like the high contrast of the dial against the bezel. I love the high contrast of the hour markers and the depth of the hour markers. These hour markers are the size of mountains. So you're getting a lot of contrast within this dial. A lot of people hate the hands. I know that um, I actually really like them. I think they're, they're pretty cool. I also don't mind the date window. It's just sitting down there at the bottom as small as it possibly can with also those quite large numerals in there. If there was a no date version in white, then I would sell this and, and get the no date version, uh, but actually I'm very happy with how this is. Now the dial, if you look just below the stack of hands, you'll see that it says ZRO2. The dial is zirconium oxide, which is a very strong, very durable ceramic. The dial isn't actually white. It's, it has this weird ever so slight shade of cream to it. It also has some dull grayness to it as well. It's, it's, it's tricky. Capturing this dial on video and photographs never does it justice. You, you need to see this dial in real life and uh, then you'll see its awesomeness. The dial and the movement for me are the biggest selling points. Let's talk about the movement. I, I first got hands on with a caliber 8800 series movement uh, when I did a review on my mate's Railmaster. It actually has an 8806 caliber, which is just the no date version of this. I just fell in love with that movement and that movement for the price is just amazing. In short, this movement is just a beast. 
We have a free sprung balance with the silicon hairspring, bi-directional winding, and it's anti-magnetic to 15,000 gauss. The barrel is DLC coated, which reduces friction and therefore increases the service interval. And of course, we have the coaxial escapement, a brilliant British invention that further increases the service intervals. The coaxial escapement works by simply a tooth hitting a jewel and just pushing it away. Just very much a pushing action. There's minimal sliding there as the tooth slides off the jewel, but because it's in the direction of travel, it's negligible. It's due to this pushing action that the escapement doesn't rely on lubrication. And so you have a longer degree of accuracy before the watch will ever need a service. It's that which is a great advantage to the coaxial. This movement goes through COSC testing and then METAS testing. METAS testing is a series of eight tests that test precision, anti-magnetism, shock resistance, water resistance, and then durability. But the coolest part is that we can see the results. Your master chronometer card that you get with your watch, you just go over to omega.com, create an account, add your watch, and then you just type in the numbers. Omega will then show you the test results for your watch and talk you through what happens in the tests. That's cool. That's really cool. My normal everyday watch used to be my Explorer. This is a 22 year old watch. The movement inside the watch isn't anything compared to this thing. I love my Explorer. It is still my favorite watch, but I wanted a watch that could handle life. This watch, it's a tall watch. It's supposed to be a mountaineer's watch, but technology has changed both with regards to watchmaking and what is around us. Magnets can really interfere, can really damage a watch. And this isn't anti-magnetic. I can wear this watch, I can wear my Seamaster, and I don't have to worry about it. 15,000 Gauss. This thing can literally eat magnets for breakfast. And I like that. The finishing of this watch is good. It's, it's what you'd expect for the, the money that you're paying. I really like the fact that the flanks of the shiny inner links are polished as well. I, I like that little touch. The only downside for the finishing is the movement. The movement looks great when you're just holding it in your hands. Just don't look at it through a loop or a macro lens because then the, the finishing starts to fall apart. But in all honesty, and especially at this price point, I think it's much more important to have a high performing movement than a highly finished movement. Things I dislike, um, I, I don't like the fact that the bezel isn't loomed. Uh, the white part of the black ceramic bezel is enamel, which is cool and it's very bright and it's, it's a solid whiteness. But actually I'd much prefer to have a loomed bezel to go with the rest of the awesome loom that is on this watch. The helium escape valve, I, I should probably mention it. I don't need it, I don't want it. It would look better without it. Now the thing that I hate is the bracelet. The bracelet is horrible and it's horrible for one reason and that is because it doesn't taper. It's a solid 20 millimeter bracelet all the way around, which means when you get to the clasp side of the bracelets, you have a 21 millimeter wide clasp. So this is a sizable clasp. The bracelet looks good and the links themselves are comfortable, but the clasp I find to be really uncomfortable. I like my watches to have a bit of a droop. That's just how I like it. But with this watch, I have to have it super tight because there's sharp edges within the clasp that just dig into my wrist and it's horribly uncomfortable uh, to the point where I don't use the bracelet. I do still think it's a good idea to buy the watch on a bracelet. If a watch comes on a bracelet, buy it on a bracelet. If you might possibly sell it on because no one wants a secondhand strap. But with this, I, I just, it lives on a NATO strap. It looks great on a NATO strap. I personally, I think NATO straps are the most comfortable way of wearing a watch. I should do it now because any other time it, it wouldn't. Over at bockandjack.shop, we've recently launched our tubular NATO strap. This is our strongest NATO strap. It's got solid 316L stainless steel hardware and the nylon has a ribbed weave, which makes it super, super strong. Perfect for heavy watches and for those who like to wear their straps tight. Jump over to barkandjack.com and check out the straps and accessories that we have over there. The Omega Seamaster. It's an awesome looking watch. It has an insanely good movement inside. We can't dispute that regardless of what you think about the design, the movement is just amazing. And for 4,000, 450 pounds, I think this is a phenomenal watch. What do you think? Thanks for watching. This type of video is my favorite type of video. The ones that I get to talk about my watches, the ones that I get to spend a lot of time with the watch and really get to bond with it and get to understand it and then get to geek out about it. Maybe I just need to buy more watches.
If you want to have a look at some of the behind the scenes footage and see how I shot these shots, I'll be sharing a video next week on my photography channel. It's just youtube.com forward slash Adrian Barker. I'll put a link in the description down below. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Barker and Jack. And if you're on Clubhouse, give me a follow on there at Barker. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.